when Bethesda revealed that Fallout 76 would be devoid of NPCs, many were concerned about what kind of stories could be told in Fallout 76. After all, NPCs and dialogue choices are a big part of what makes Fallout Fallout. However, you don't need NPCs to tell a good story. These are seven amazing Fallout stories that had no NPCs. Number 7. The Devil's Do, Fallout 4 At some point in your adventures in the Commonwealth, you'll hear someone talking about the Museum of Witchcraft and how spooky it is. Or maybe you'll just stumble onto the building yourself. Either way, a body next to the entrance contains a holotape. You'll hear a group of soldiers talking as they attempt to find shelter from something by going inside the museum. Once you enter the building, you'll hear a creature roar. The floor creaks above you as something monstrous lurks one floor above. A body partially falls through a hole in the ceiling, only to effortlessly be dragged away by the beast. Getting closer to the map marker, you'll come face to face with a death claw. After dealing with it, a holotape found in the bathroom explains why the death claw killed the soldiers. They stole the death claw's eggs. From there, you can sell the lone pristine egg for caps, or you can return it to its mother. Number 6. Vault 11, Fallout New Vegas Vault 11 is one of the most well-known Fallout vaults. There are no NPCs alive within the vault. As you venture further inside, you'll find posters, terminals, and holotapes that make it very clear what happened inside. The vault dwellers were told that they must sacrifice one of themselves every year or else the vault's computer would kill them all. After a while, it was decided that the overseer would be sacrificed each year, so elections were held to determine who would be the overseer. The sacrificial lamb would be led down a hallway, shown a short video which explained how it was their role in life to die, and then they would be eviscerated by robots. An unknown amount of time later, there were only five vault dwellers left. They decided that they would not sacrifice anyone else. They were done with the game. Which is exactly what the computer wanted all along. The computer said that the remaining vault dwellers were a shining example of humanity. To reward them, the vault's door could now be opened so they could come and go as they pleased. Horrified, the five vault dwellers all committed suicide to punish themselves for what they had done. Number 5. The Velvet Curtain Fallout 3 The Velvet Curtain is a quest in Fallout 3's Point Lookout DLC that has you carry out the orders of a long since deceased Chinese spy. You investigate their hotel room, travel across Point Lookout to open their safety deposit box, and recover their orders. Their task was to destroy a submarine, and that task now falls to you. After retrieving the detonation codes from their body, it's up to you to blow up the sub. After activating the self-destruct sequence, you are instructed via a hollow tape to head to a bunker to be rewarded for your hard work. There are weapons and ammo aplenty, but those aren't for you. Down a hall, inside a small room, is a terminal that gives you your final debriefing. You've done a great service for China. Unfortunately, you must now die for the cause. No loose ends. It's not often you go through so much work only to find out that your reward is death. Number 4. Keller Family Refuge, Fallout 3 Scattered around the Capital Wasteland are holotapes that tell the story of the Keller family, a family that couldn't gain access to one of the local vaults. Alex Keller was a U.S. Army National Guardsman who stole access codes to a bunker from the U.S. military. In an attempt to ensure that his entire family got inside when the bombs fell, he gave each of them a single digit of the code so they would have to be together to get in. The final holotape reveals just how estranged the family had been. Ralph Keller says that he would rather walk into the mushroom cloud than join his family in a bunker. The Kellers got inside the bunker with Ralphie's code. It didn't work out so well for them, as you come across their skeletons and a glowing ghoul after entering the bunker in the National Guard Depot. Number 3. The Ranger Cabin, Fallout 4 on October 22, 2077, a young girl got into a heated argument with her parents. In a fit of rage, she packed her things and retreated to a cabin she had often been to as a child. Her holotape concludes with her asking if anything will ever be right again. You can find this holotape next to her body in the ranger cabin. It is assumed that she died when the bombs fell the next day. Number 2. The Dunwich Building, Fallout 3 
the Dunwich building is perhaps one of the most talked about locations from Fallout 3. Hell, from any Fallout game. What sets the building apart from any other in Fallout 3 are the supernatural elements. Doors will open by themselves, mugs fall off tables, and a severed head you find early in the building will disappear if you return to that room. But more than that, the holotapes inside the Dunwich building document Jamie's descent into madness and his transformation into a ghoul. He was a raider when he ventured into the Dunwich building in an effort to track down his father, who vowed to return a book to an altar in the virulent underchambers beneath the Dunwich building. After resting against the altar, Jamie had begun the process of turning into a ghoul. Before long, he had descended into madness and become a worshipper of Og Qualtoth. Number 1. The Survivalist, Fallout New Vegas On October 22, 2077, the Great War began. Some were lucky and died instantly, others lingered on and died slowly over the course of days, weeks, or even months. Others still lived on, scavenged for food and shelter, lived for a few years. One man lived, lost, and became an icon for a community. Randall Dean Clark from Fallout New Vegas' Honest Hearts DLC. Five days after the Great War, he told an old couple who had been blinded by the Flash that he was going to get some help. Then he blew their brains out. He eventually made his way to a cave in Zion, where he lived for several years. In November 2095, he helped a group of survivors find their friend who had broken his leg far away from their camp. In February 2096, a group of Vault Dwellers from Vault 22 attacked the group Randall had helped, killing all of the men and some of the women, taking the rest of the women and children with them. Two days later, he discovered that the Vault Dwellers had eaten the women and children. Over the next 10 days, he killed 24 of the Vault Dwellers. He eventually met a Vault Dweller named Sylvie, who had abandoned her people. In 2100, Sylvie got pregnant and died during childbirth, along with their child. That night, he was going to shoot himself. By 2113, he was still alive, still planned to shoot himself, and still didn't do it. In April 2123, another group had moved onto the land where the first group he encountered lived 30 years ago. Randall started leaving them gifts, notes, books, weapon manuals, and medical supplies. At some point, he started signing every note he left them with the father. In his last set of notes, he wrote about each member of the group and what made them special. He told them that the father was pleased by their kind nature. The father in the cave died. On January 23rd, 2124, he was 71 years old. Alright, that's going to do it for this video about 7 Fallout stories that had no NPCs. If you enjoyed the video or learned anything, leave a like. If you didn't enjoy the video or didn't learn anything, leave a dislike. Follow me on Twitter, at Mitten Squad. My name is Paul of Mitten Squad. Have a wonderful day.